Hey, yo, everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review, and today we're going to be doing Batman, The Dark Knight, Volume 1, Night Terrors. Spelled with a K. I see the play on words there, don't you? Take a look at this comic cover right here. Now, Batman the Dark Knight is often considered the black sheep of the Batman family, at least when it comes down to the four Bruce Wayne Batman titles. Why? Well, see, each of the Bruce Wayne titles, Batman Detective, Batman Robin, have their niche. The thing that makes them what they are. Batman is traditional Batman stories, superhero stuff at its best. Detective Comics is more street-level mysteries, and Batman being detective. And Batman Robin focuses on the relationship between Batman Robin and is more or less traditionally a team-up book. What is Batman Dark Knight? It doesn't really know at first. On one hand, it's kind of Batman dealing with his side role gallery outside the main stop. On the other hand, it's like a Brave and the Bold team up with the Justice League members. On the other hand, it's just Batman doing whatever. And I finally get it. What exactly is David Finch's Batman Dark Knight? It's nothing. In that, David Finch is just telling Batman stories. Plain, flat, and simple. For ill or for good, that's what it is. But is it for ill or for good? Is this a good run on Batman, or is it a bad run? You're just going to have to wait and see. Let's get into the story itself. The basic story is that there is an outbreak in Arkham Asylum. Of course there's an outbreak in Arkham Asylum. It's like every Tuesday it happens. Batman, he goes out, he watches the Big Bang Theory, gets a little Dairy Queen and Quiznos, and then he deals with the Arkham Asylum breakout. Something along that line. But see, this breakout is a little different. Everyone's hucked up on this huge super steroid similar to Bane's Venom. So much so that it causes Two-Face to call himself One-Face. Don't ask. And Batman is curious to find out exactly who is behind all this trouble. Who is behind all the shenanigans and tomfoolery. And while this is going on, Batman gets some help from the Justice League. Primarily the Flash and Superman. And... While they're helping him out, he is chasing down the rabbit hole of the White Rabbit, a mysterious female individual with purple eyes. Can Batman find out who is truly behind this Venom wannabe kind of serum that has taken over all the bad guys? And can he find out who the White Rabbit is? Or will, unfortunately, his friends turn against him? Just gonna have to read and see. Good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Good. Uh, first and foremost is David Finch's art is absolutely stunning in this. Um, incredible detail added on each page. Uh, everything. A lot of effort is put into this. Um, I particularly like how he does action scenes, and I do like how eventually throughout the whole story, Batman gets more and more battle damage, his costume falls apart more and more, and it's nice to see that transition. So there's a lot of detail put into this. Similar to Tony Daniels' run on Detective Comics, you also see how really the writer is able to interpret what he wants because he's the artist. You get that dual combo. It's really you get to see what the story is in his mind and play it out on paper. A lot of times artists and writers don't even talk to each other. But in this, it doesn't really matter because they're both one and the same. Uh, the White Rabbit angle of the story is very curious and it kept me guessing for much of the issues to the point that even though when we find out who the White Rabbit is, I kind of go, oh, I should have known that, but hey... It's kind of cool I did it. Um, and it's also nice to see all different various Batman villains show up in this, as well as him team up with a few of the Batman, well, supporting cast and all the different, well, superheroes that he teams up with. Bad. The story itself is fairly thin. I don't know if David Finch really knew where he was going with the story at first, because it feels very sporadic. At first it starts off kind of gritty, then it gets very 
superhero traditionally with the team ups and it kind of is all over the place on exactly what the tone of the comic is and tone of the comic is very important if you're trying to set a right tone and you succeed you can have a great story if there is no tone then the story itself kind of feels sporadic the pacing of the story is also well more to be desired Lastly is, while the writing is good in some parts, the dialogue can be bad at other parts, and just downright cheesy. In particular, I am no longer Two-Face, Batman. You can call me One-Face. Why, why are we calling you One-Face? You still kind of have two faces. Yeah. Um, on a whole, whether or not you should get it. If you guys have been watching me for some time now, you may remember that I gave the first issue of Batman the Dark Knight a 2 out of 5, which at the time was one of my lowest ratings I ever gave. Uh, since then, in, in rereading this, the story isn't quite as bad as I probably thought it was, but it's still not quite as good as the other Batman stories. If I had to give this a rating now, I'd give it a 2.5 out of 5 dead center in the middle. There's enough here for it to be enjoyable, but there's also not enough here for it to be amazing. It's just there. And I can commemorate David Finch on what he's doing because it was fun at some points, but again, without having a right tone and no niche in the Batman family of stories, I think it really suffered in that. Do I recommend picking it up? Only to the most hardcore Batman fans, but if you're trying to save money, especially with the new 52 in trades, it might be something that you want to avoid. Batman the Dark Knight does get better in later issues and assumingly in later trades, but this isn't one of them. That's it. I'm going to end this review here. This is Andrew saying peace out for now.